Now it's time for us to do some LoRa interworking after the one term interworking overview. I'm still with Yungi Park for this. And this is the motivation. So in the IoT and smart cities, we need a communication protocol and network. And LoRa is being used widely these days. Because when we deploy some sensors in the field, we need the wireless communication and LoRa is cheap and you can have your own network. So it is favorable in this instance. And in this session, we are going to use the open source for the LoRa WAN server. So uh, it is free. And we are going to kind of have a small uh, project with a real LoRa tracker device. So we were going to see the data coming from the LoRa device and then gateway server and then finally to the one m So this is the kind of outline and we're going to use the chart stack uh, open source uh, stack in this session and in this uh, slide, we are covering the installation and the configuration and then the IP uh, usages. And for the setup itself, it takes too long time. So you can just kind of do the same thing as our slides kind of explaining. So we are going to skip over the setup, itself, but we are going to give you the configuration uh, within the demo after the presentation. So unlike the other sessions, in this LoRa interworking session, we will finish the slide presentation first and then jump into the video demo for the configuration and we are gonna uh, run it as a prerequisite. We need this hyper IoT OS for the Docker and uh, we are going to explain it really soon and we use the open source chart stack for the LoRa WAN server and to install it in an easiest way we are going to use the docker and for that we need this uh, whole bit of what you mean and for the sample source for the LoRa IPE you are going to explain it please download that one from the github And we are not going to explain all the details regarding LoRa uh, by the alliance or the, by the specification, but LoRa is the technology from the LoRa alliance and being widely adopted in the village these days. And skip over all the technical details. And I think this is important because, for example, uh, this is the kind of specification per region or the country. In, in our case, Korea, uh, we use the kind of same kind of bandwidth from the Asian one, which is near 923 megahertz. And in case of, for example, China, uh, China is using the same band as EU433, so around 430 megahertz. So please make it's sure uh, clear to check the bandwidth that your country is located in. And this is Laura Wen. And of course, there's the uh, physical layer and the uh, Mac layer. And then on top of the Laura Mac, there is the apl Laura application. And there will be the one team or the other LoRa applications working in this uh, LoRa event. And there is a notion of LoRa event class or classes. And the difference basically is how do we uh, send the download messages to the LoRa device. And uh, the meaning of upload or the download in this sense is when LoRa, for example, the 
sensor sends the sensor reporting to the server, and that is upload. And when you send any kind of activation or confirm messages to the device, that is download downlink message. And typically, there is a class A being used to have some batteries because when we send a downlink message, then it will be uh, transmitted when there is an unlink message. And when the unlink responds back to the device, there will be the downlink, downlink messages piggyback in that response. So that's A. And of course, there are the other classes in different behavior. And this is just for your information. So this is Aurora when kind of architecture in a simple way. And EndNode means typically the LoRa devices, and there's the LoRa gateway, and there's LoRa server, and then the LoRa application servers that we are interested in. So I've been uh, mentioning the chart stack uh, open source implementation, and when you see this pink box charge tag open source covers these these components so you need to insert the charge tag uh, to the gateway side and the server side and uh, you should uh, deploy your LoRa sensors in the field and then we will work on the right hand side with LoRa IPE and on npm So again, this is a chart stack network architecture, and this would be too much details to explain, so let's skip it over at the moment. So here are the components that we are going to use in this session. So from the left, uh, we are going to use the LoRa device, which is basically the GPS tracker. When we hit the button, then it will send the longitude latitude data to the LoRa server, for example, of course. Uh, in the Raspberry Pi, uh, when you install that 64-bit uh, operating system and the other components that you're going to explain really soon, uh, there are kind of LoRa components. And from the application server, uh, IP gets, for example, the unlink messages, which will be stored to the one temp platform. And we are going to kind of work on the one time application, which consumes all the omnic data, or in other case, one time application can send some actuation messages down to the LoRa device. So the down way would be again one time application to the platform, and then the IP gets that downlink or actuation messages, and it will go to the device. But in this session, especially the practice, we are going to show you the uplink messages kind of ever serve from the device to the one MTM platform. Because this is just the kind of reporting for the reporting device or the sensor. And when you have any actuation enabled device, then you can kind of extend the source code that we are going to provide in the IPE and your own implementation. So again, this is the device that we are going to use. So when you hit the button, the longitude and latitude is transmitted. And suppose to roll out when version one, and this is just the kind of sensor device, not the actuation device. So when you send any download, downlink message to this device, then there will be nothing happening. So this is the uh, gateway for us as in Korea. And depending on your country that we saw from the other slide, then you should kind of pick the other ARC module and the And the software setup, and please just kind of refer to the materials and do it yourself. And I think we are providing enough information for you to do so. I 
think uh, you will uh, do that by yourself, but uh, you should kind of pause when you need time and kind of resume for the other slides. And from this slide, uh, uh, the assumption is you successfully uh, install the charge tech open source, and there is the kind of admin you know, web page for you to see the raw network, the setup, and the status check, whatever, whatever. There are a few things to configure, and firstly, uh, you create a server. And there are several profile concepts within the charge stick. Uh, there's the gateway profile, and the service profile, and the device profiles that we are going to kind of use really soon. And with those profiles, uh, we create the gateway because you can deploy possibly kind of multiple gateways in the fields and if you have the kind of same profile then you can share it to all the gateways but if you have different profiles then of course you can configure uh, different ones so in this page we create a gateway following a gateway profile and to create the application you choose or you pick a service profile that we created before and to add devices in the fields which are connected to a gateway, then of course you will choose the device profile within the configuration. And there's the REST API supported by ChargeTech, so uh, you can check it and try it by yourself. Now let's move to the LoRa interworking proxy entity uh, development. So this is the architecture for us to do in this section. So from the left, again, there's a LoRa device, which is the GPS tracker, and then the gateway that we showed you before. And depending on the reason, since the bandwidths are different, so there would be slightly different gateways deployed in your situation. In the LoRa WAN server, this is the church tech uh, covered. And church tech provides the MQTT as the communication protocol. So our LoRa IP right after the LoRa WAN server is communicating over MQTT. And from the LoRa IP, uh, to the Mobius, which is one MPM platform. The communication will be the one MPM protocol over the one MPM So this is the research tree. Again, as we kind of learned from the other sessions, when we build any one MPM applications, including the IP, uh, we should kind of design the flow and the API usages, as well as the resource tree design like this. All the API cores are bind to the resource creation, update, delete, and retrieve. Uh, there will be the resource tree design, and trees are composed of different resource type instances, for example, this AE. And these are containers, and these are content instances, and we can also see so there's the raw IP represented as the one MPM AE resource, and each uh, raw IP has uh, containers which represents raw devices. Each raw device has sub container resources. The first one is the up, which is on data, and the other one is the down. So when you uh, when your device sends any Omnic messages to the LoRa WAN server, we will get it from the LoRa WAN and create new content instances in this Omnic uh, container resource. And when there is a downlink 
from the one time application side down to the LoRa devices. Uh, we will create the new content instance as the activation messages. In this case, the originator will be the one time application. And as the LoRa IP kind of perspective, uh, it should get that new instance creation as an event. So we will create the subscription to get the new downlink or the activation messages. And it will send the kind of message to the LoRa WAN. And there will be the downlink messages reversal to the LoRa device. So this is the simple scenario. I think uh, we already covered by the figure before with the research tree or the configuration. So for the unlink, uh, we create some basic resources like the containers and the other, the other. And IP is communicating with the WAN server over the MQTT. So it should kind of uh, register to the event or the topics that is information is defined by the LoRa web server, especially in this example stack. And it will get some data from the LoRa web server and convert the data and send the data to the individual LoRa device container, especially the unlink subcontainers to the one implement platform. And downlink, um, this is the Versa, when there is the actuation messages or downlink messages, depending on the LoRa test mode like this DBT, it will finally get to the device in depending on the. So now uh, we are going to explain how LoRa IP is composed of. So in the project, when you uh, get the source code from the repository. There are several files and app.js. We are going to explain how do we handle uplink or downlink messages. And in the conf.js, there's the all the configurations and the sensor list. Uh, you need to kind of put the device UI list in that file because. Um, this is just a kind of simple source code for our really simple or small deployment, but you should have your own device deployments. So in the configuration file, there are several settings. And for example, you should configure the one time platform. In this case, we use the Mobius that is running in the remote server or when you install the Mobius locally, then the host and port should be different depending on your environment. And this is the kind of uh, MQTT broker or the server setting. So if you install the broker locally, or if you install it in your kind of server machine, then you should change the address. So in the project folder, there is the conf.js, which is a configuration file. And you can change the uh, settings for the one m platform that is working with the especially like the kind of IP address and the port and the other kind of ID and names. And also uh, with the church tag, uh, we are using again MQTT broker. And if you install the broker somewhere, then you should put the host address here. That's the uh, minimum modification that you need to do in the complex business. And there are the other files that you can modify. For example, first thing is the sensor underscore list. So this is the sensor list. Uh, as a convention, we put ID and all the device UI. And again, this is the text file. So you can mimic to add your own sensors device UI. 
uh, in the app.js, uh, you can modify some kind of functions to have your own logic or your own kind of data payload implementation and so on and so on. We will see uh, soon. And from the conf.js, uh, let's see how it looks like. Oh, so this is the conf.js. So you should uh, find this file and change the settings for your own CSE and the MQTT buffer. And in the sensor list, uh, just simply at the moment there's just one thing. And when you add more, the other, the other, the other. And this could come up between different device UI of Checks of the connecting location for the manner. And this is the application. And we will come back soon when we kind of talk about the uplink and downlink uh, behavior. And of course, uh, once you download the source code with the Git or the Z file from the GitHub website, then you should kind of install the other packages in the folder. And when you kind of run it, then you will see some log. And let's see what happens when we run this LoRa IP. Because the kind of initialization procedure, there will be several resources uh, creation in the one m ten platform. First thing to do is the installation and we run it. So we have configured two uh, devices, which is two on three and two on four. So the LoRa EP as an initialization created those device containers and as the subcontainers it created the uplink and downlink subcontainers. And just for your information, uh, this kind of random kind of resource name subscription, this is created by the resource browser itself. But if you check the source code, IP creates this subscription, which is a sub underscore downlink, to get the downlink messages from the other one of the applications. This is what we already explained before. Soon we will finish this presentation and there will be the uh, demonstration and pushing the button on the tracker and you will see the data created in the one the platform. So let's just explain the concept, what we are going to do soon. So initially we create the containers like the up and down, but there is no kind of instance resources at that point. So let's assume that we push the button, then there is the new Next messages created, then at that point we can check the data from the postman, for example. Of course, you can do that by your own or the resource browser that we just saw. When you see the content attribute, then there's the kind of encoded data that can be kind of parsed later. So uh, this is a LoRa Omnic message uh, uploaded to the one of platform. So whenever there's a new data, whenever we push the button, then there's the kind of new content create instance creation under the up container. And you can check it, of course, from the chart stack uh, the admin page. So this is really helpful, and you can do the same thing or similar thing from the resource browser. And 
for your information this is our browser in different version and you can see the same monitoring kind of event from the windows version that you successfully installed from yesterday and let's see the omnic message handling source code as uh, it would be really different for your own device and there would be some modification and whenever we get the uh, omnic uh, messages from the rora when over mqtt and this is the function that we kind of parse the messages and we get the data which is encoded in page 64 because the Rora when server really want to kind of encode all the uh, payload data in page 64 so we firstly decode it and we kind of encode it to the hexa string and we send it to the one platform to be used or to be shared to the other applications and the downlink uh, even we will going to have the demonstration for the uplink and but we are going to explain how the download downlink works because the basic kind of source code is already provided in the project so when you have the uh, enabled device then you can use that code for your service or the device so again, uh, the assumption is the other one of applications uh, will send the downlink message to the device. For example, the device configuration or any device configuration. In this case, as a kind of dummy data, we send the hello. And when we, when that uh, application kind of Place the downlink messages or the downlink data into the down container, and due to this uh, subscription sub underscore downlink at IP that there will be the new notification occurred, and the IP itself will get this notification, and the IP parse the data and convert the message into the LoRa when and send it to the LoRa when server. Finally, uh, through the LoRa when and gateway, the device, in this case, uh, for example, two and three, the device will get the downlink message. And just like the uplink message, you can check the message transmission status from the hashtag admin panel. And let's see the source code that you're going to use later and this is the function that we deal with all the downlink messages from one of the applications to the uh, devices and we will get the downlink messages over the notification one of the notification and we will get the data which is basically the content attribute of the content instance and this is what it means so basically let's say that this is the content attribute of the content that is created the downlink message and we will kind of encode it as hexa string and another encoding for the page 64 and the encoded data is sent over in this uh, property in the whole payload message and we need the other settings just for the rora when so that's it for the rora uplink and downlink and right after this presentation we will show you the or a configuration that we can just simply over and we will show you what happens when we push the LoRa tracker device and we will see it from the browser and also the perfect admin web page and again you can uh, 
uh, have your own kind of practice with the LoRa downlink whenever you have a LoRa actuation with the source code even and it, yeah. that's it thank you